Hello and welcome to Canvas Basics uh, for WSFCS and more specifically West Forsyth High School. Um, today we are going to be learning about Canvas Basics and we're going to start off by signing in and finding uh, your classes. Uh, there are a couple of ways to sign into Canvas, but ultimately you have to go through Rapid Identity, which is my.ncedcloud.org. Um, and when you sign in, you will see a dashboard, and we are looking for uh, Canvas right here. Canvas, the red one. The blue one is DPI, so we want to stick with the red. So when you first go into Canvas, um, you will be taken to another dashboard, the Canvas dashboard. And what you will see are any classes that you are assigned a role, be it teacher, student, co-teacher, observer, anything like that will show up on your dashboard. Um, if you do see, if you do not see your courses, probably because they are unpublished, they are created by the district automatically from PowerSchool based on your enrollment, and this, the courses are unpublished and then just a little bit down below so you scroll down to find them now when you click onto a class i would like for you to uh, notice that you come to a page that doesn't really have anything on it uh, you see this little symbol right here and ask you to create a new a new module but in fact it's just the default home page or landing page uh, for a canvas course and until you select a new one um, it will stay on the module page. Now, you want to change your home page. We're going to do that over on the right-hand side um, on some menu options that you have. Uh, underneath course status, you will see the publish and unpublish button to get some content and then choose home pages, that third one down there. And to, ch to change your home page, you will then have to choose from some options. Um, the course activity stream can be your home page, and that is where your to-do list um, is the prominent thing that is seen. A pages front page is your own creation, and we'll talk more about uh, what a page is in Canvas here in a second. Course modules, as of course, is the default, and we'll uh, learn more on modules in a later uh, presentation. Not today, uh, but in a later presentation, we will get to that. Uh, assignments list can be your home page. This is just the entire bulk from beginning of the year to end of the year, all of your assignments. Um, the syllabus uh, is your last thing that could be your um, home page option. Um, it does the exact same thing your assignment list does. Uh, in addition to having a calendar and your grade set up and then all the specifics of your class uh, in front of that. I really like the syllabus page, but I do use a pages front page for my own personal uh, home page. Make your choice and then hit save. So how do you create a welcome page in Canvas? Well, to create a page, you have to go into Canvas and navigate to uh, pages on the left-hand side. There it is. And you're going to then click on the plus page button uh, to create a page, and that's in the top right. So after we click on that, um, after we create our welcome front page, you have to go back to choose your home page again. All right and make sure that it's published, at least the page itself. All right, so we navigate back to pages, uh, and we see that we have created our welcome page. And then the three dots um, are over here on the right-hand side. Uh, those are our options for this page, and we are checking to see that the green check mark are more accurately a white check mark and a green circle tells us that it's published so this is the only way we can do this next part is that we go and click on those three dots we get a menu 
and we are going to bookmark it here to use as front page. And so now, as we choose that option, we can go back and set our home page, not as the modules, but as our uh, pages home page. For us this year, and almost every year, we should have this following information on our welcome page. Um, the reason being is that we we want the students to have access to the same information in the same way um, for all their classes so that there is a horizontal alignment between all of us. So here's, here's the basic information required on each welcome page. The name of the class, the name of the teacher, a welcome note about yourself is appreciated, but it is not required. A picture of yourself would be great. Uh, contact information for your preferred methods of communication that would be email, your remind, if you have a Google Voice number that you want them to have. And then we would also like for you to link to your syllabus. This is what is required, not everything. For that uh, syllabus, just know you can link to a document or you can uh, link to the syllabus page in Canvas, which we'll talk about right now. The syllabus page is a pretty cool feature in Canvas. The syllabus page has a section for you to enter or post your entire syllabus and any grading information. So if you have a class rules document, if you have the grading breakdown, tardy policies, anything that you include on your syllabus when you give it out to students at the beginning of the year, you can put it here. Or you can link to a document. Also, if enabled, you can have a course summary displayed as well, and that does the assignment list by date. So it does a nice job of color coding things so that modules or dates are kind of grouped together. Also it enables this calendar to pop up on the right and then they can see, the students can see where their dates are falling when they have assignments due. And underneath, um, excuse me there, underneath uh, you, the course grades will also show up there. If you do category weighting, the category weight will show up. So how do we link to that syllabus page? There are two things you could do. As you are editing editing a page, the link icon can give you two choices of an external link or a course link. External links are going to anywhere else, to Google Docs. That's a good way to share information. When you go share through the Google Suite, you will get a URL, and they can open it directly from your welcome page. That's oh, great. But also, I think the uh, the course links are a really cool tool. Under course links, you can link to anything that's already in your course. Get any of these uh, options here. Of course, we want to choose syllabus. So that is having your syllabus. You've created your page. Let's talk a little bit more about what pages are in Canvas. And this is from Canvas itself. The pages they store content and educational resources that are part of a course or a group, but don't necessarily belong in an assignment. It, it's text, it's video, it's links to files. Um, you can link to other pages. It could be used as a collaboration uh, tool, or you can have group wikis, um, or only specific users can have access. Uh, uh, and the cool thing is that Canvas keeps the entire history of the page to account for changes over time. So it's a really cool thing to use. It really can be like a wiki, a wiki that does change over time. Pages are content for instruction. Maybe it is a short story you want them to read. It is a, um, a lab experiment video you want them to watch. Uh, but pages are for your content. When you click on creating a, a page, you get this view. The first thing you will do is give it a title. And then you will see 
a box here. This is a rich text box. I want you to think of a rich text box like you would think of any other word processing program you use, like Word, Google Docs, Apple Pages, and there are a ton of them. The thing that it is not like is Notepad. Notepad is not a rich text box. Other options that we have here, um, and we see this on our little bar, I'm going to explain exactly what you can see. Of course, we have the usual fonts and font manipulators of font size. Uh, this next option is the text auto format. Of course, you have bold, italics, underline, text color, or font color, your highlight color, and superscript. The next four options that we have are for embedding content. Um, embedding content of things that are not integrated into Canvas. So we have your links, your external or course, um, images, media, and then documents. You can bring anything into uh, the, the text box. The next three things that you see are what we might affectionately call plugins, but this are more embedded embed options um, for integrated apps. Um, and as you can see, the most often used apps generally stay at the top. And we see Discovery Ed and Google Drive here. But as you click on this, you would see a drop down menu of other options. Next three um, are more kind of text manipulators. We have justification, your left, your right, your center. We have bullets with numbering and then indentation here on the right for the last one. And these last four are kind of some specialized things. Um, we have a, a clear format button here. Uh, so if you don't want to have to undo highlighting, font color, underlining, bolding, italicizing, you can hit clear format. Insert a table. Uh, then here we have insert a formula. And the last thing is this brings up uh, an embed box where you can copy in HTML code to embed. If this is the only way you can get it in, this could be used for things like uh, Quizlets um, or any other place that gives you an embed code for, for something that you've created. This would be where you insert that embed code. More options that we'll see in creating a page. We will see who can edit. You can change this from teachers to teachers and students and to everyone. So there's some options there, but most of the time you'll probably just stay teacher. You can add this page to a student to-do list. As referenced before, a to-do list is kind of what shows up for a student when they log onto the class as, as the activities and content that need to be viewed that day. If you enable this page to be added to their to-do list, it comes up um, and it shows up to them as a part of their class. Mastery paths is something that is a little bit more advanced uh, use of Canvas. Um, and we will be reviewing that later in another presentation. So for right now, just know that it is an option. And we're going to go back to it. The notify users option here is good for that wiki type page where the content is being updated quite often. And the users will want to know if anything has changed. Other options that you'll see right below a rich text box. Um, so the first thing you see, this little keyboard image gives you some dis, uh, some keyboard shortcuts, which are, are helpful and useful, um, uh, but only if you really, really enjoy using uh, keyboard shortcuts. Most of the time you guys are just going to use your mouse. The next thing that we see is an accessibility checker. This is really cool. Um, this will check your text and everything um, for any sort of 
accessibility flaw. And it will tell you what you've done and how to fix it as to the size of the font, the color of the font, uh, and how that might work for an end user. The next thing you'll see is a word count. Uh, of course, tell you how many words are on the page. HTML is our next option. This will entirely, this will show you the entire text in HTML code. So sometimes I use that to change the size of an embedded presentation to 100% instead of a pixel amount. And that might scare you, the fact that I just said that. You do not have to mess with this too much. Um, if you want to, feel free, but this is how you can switch back and forth from the rich text box to the HTML code. The expanding arrows will take this rich text box and make it the full screen. And these two rows of four dots are how you can, instead of making it a full screen, you can drag down the size of the rich text box. You can make it smaller, you can make it bigger just so you can see what you're typing. And so that is the content. I will say that we're going to see this rich text box over and over and over again. It's a basic part of almost every type of thing you can create in Canvas. And the first thing we're gonna really talk about is assignments. Um, so just like last time, we're going to go to that left side menu. We're going to navigate to assignments. We're going to click on assignments, and then we're going to click on the uh, the blue plus assignment button to create the page um, that's in the top right. As I just said, the first options we're going to see in assignments will have the rich text box, just like it had in pages. But then right after that are the things where we really get into assignment function. Um, points, that is the number of points the assignment is worth, the assignment group. I want you guys to think of that as like, like categories in PowerSchool. If you're using category weights or assignment group weighting, this is where you can tell what assignment is in which category. Your display grade as. <clears throat> Your display grade as option um, has maybe more things than you're used to seeing. Percentage, so that's on a scale of one, a zero to 100 percent of the points that you described earlier. Complete, incomplete has four options. You know, completed, incompleted, not turned in, or ungraded. Um, so it kind of gets a drop down for each uh, each student that needs a grade. Points is, of course, you can make, that's all based on the amount of points that the assignment is worth. Letter grade will do the A, B, C, D, F. GPA scale is, of course, 0 to 4. And then not graded means that you will not be giving it a grade. Kind of self-explanatory. Next, underneath that, you will see submission types. And this is kind of where we really need to think about what we're doing. Just because you are putting an assignment into Canvas doesn't mean that it has to be a digital assignment, all right? So if you choose no submission, it means that there was nothing to turn in. That could be like a presentation that you watched, or maybe you walked around the room taking roll and checking homeworks or notebooks or journals or anything else. On paper would be a test taken in class or a quiz or any sort of thing that's on a paper. At that point, Canvas is not looking for some assignment. It knows that the grade will be put in later date after you get done grading the paper. The online and external tool points uh, we're going to talk about here in a second. And here it is. So when you choose online as your submission type, um, you'll get five options to choose from. Text entry will give them a rich text box for them to type in whatever they want. A website URL is exactly like it was earlier. This is where if you're sharing from Google Docs, slide sheets, you know, those are shared generally by URLs. Um, the one point you would want to know is that files can be edited after submission 
and before review if they're just sharing a URL. Media recordings would be audio or video recordings. Student annotation is a pretty cool tool that I uh, that we will talk about at a later time. Um, but basically, you upload a document, and they can write on it, make comments, basically annotate it. File uploads. This is when you want to require students to submit something and not be able to edit after submission like they could with a website URL. You can even restrict the types of files that can be uploaded after selecting this option. And just know you can select more than one option at a time. External options or are are what enables Canvas users to use integrated apps. And from Canvas, they'd say, an external tool enables Canvas users with LTI learning resources and activities originating from other websites and academic technologies. Basically, he, we're not reinventing the wheel with some of these cool um, software and technologies and websites that already exist, like Discovery Ed, Edpuzzle, Google Drive, Khan Academy, Quizlet, Remind, and YouTube. We don't need to pull them in any other way. It pulls in that external URL and it is integrated to go straight into the gradebook as you're doing an assignment. It's very, very awesome. I recommend using some of these external tools. As you continue building your assignment, you'll see some other options. You can give students as many attempts as you want when the submission attempts. And then if you have chosen text entry or file upload as your option, and only those two, once you choose another one, this goes away. But a plagiarism review, and we have turnitin.com uh, as our plagiarism review, uh, that'll come up and then it'll force them to go through uh, that plagiarism review. And then you can also change to show the report to students immediately or after grading. So it does let you customize how that works. Continuing with assignments, we will see that if you have created groups in the people section of Canvas, and if you need help with that, please book a session with me, uh, you can assign group assignments where the easy part is that only one person in that group needs to assign it, or needs to turn it in, rather. Peer reviews is another option, if you so choose. This is a good uh, thing for English classes, or maybe any class where there's a paper being written. Um, at least that's the example I'm thinking of, where it might be nice for the students to learn how to critique each other. More assignment options. Sync to Sys is what enables that assignment to be sent to PowerSchool without having to put it into PowerSchool, um, meaning you typing it in. And I strongly recommend setting up your sync so that you can do everything in Canvas and just send over the necessary information to PowerSchool when you're done. The assign to will be uh, will be something that shows up every time it, that it, a artifact is graded. Um, you can assign by course, section, or even by the individual student. Each one of these different kinds of assignments, when you have assigned it to them, can have different due dates and availability. And just so you know, just like in PowerSchool, the grading term um, that the assignment shows up in is determined by the due date. If you choose somewhere between August 29th and October 30th, then this assignment will be in the first quarter. If you choose it to be October 31st to Oh, this is me guessing here. The third, fourth week of January, then that second quarter. And so that's how our that's how our grading periods are done by date, by due date. The availability is actually a pretty cool feature that you can use. When you publish an assignment or a page, the students can see it. But if you change the availability of an assignment, that means that they can't interact with it. They cannot manipulate it. They can click on it, but it won't let them get to any exam or test. Right? And then the until date will be when it is over. You can make this as short 
or as long as you want. I have used it before when we're having an online quiz, and they should have started it at 8.15 and then finished it by 8.45. So they only had 30 minutes. That was the availability from. And if I had a kid that was out that day, I get to go ahead down here, click on the Add button, and give that student a different due date and availability from and until. There is a lot of customization available to you in this feature. The next type of basic page we're going to talk about, our basic feature in Canvas is discussions. Discussions are, once again, on the left-hand side. We're going to choose it in our menu, and then we're going to hit the blue plus discussion button at the top right of the page. The first options that we see below the rich text box is to post to. This is the exact same thing that we just saw with the assignment where you could put it to different sections of students. Now, unfortunately, you can't do it to individual students. Not much of a discussion board if there's only one student assigned to that board. So if you have a course with multiple sections, you can have a different discussion for each course or for each section in your course. You can also attach a file to discussion instead of in, uh, embedding it into that rich text box. So those are your two options that we see first in discussions. A newer feature um, in discussions are the anonymous discussion. And so you can have control over what level of anonymity you would like so off means that their names and their profile pictures will be visible. Partial means that they can choose to reveal themselves if they want. And then full anonymous discussion means that all student names and profile pictures will be hidden. It's a really cool thing as the forces the content of the discussion to be the focal point rather than who said it. Other discussion options that you'll see below anonymous discussion um, are these. Now, you won't see all of these because some of them uh, require kind of a parent option to be enabled. The first option you see will be users must post before seeing replies, kind of a standard feature that if you're asking for an answer to a question, you don't want the students to be able to see that answer, um, the answer that other students have provided before writing their own. This will make the students have to post before they can see any other post. Podcast feed is kind of an advanced um, feature. Basically what it does is that when you are adding audio or video to it, podcast feed would enable that audio or video to be found in external tools like iTunes. Um, if you do enable the podcast feed, the include student replies and podcast feed are become an option to you. Um, most often this is left off because I'm not sure how many podcasts you listen to, but generally don't come with user comments afterwards. Uh, so a graded discussion will then add it to kind of the assignments and then you will give it a grade like any other kind of assignment. But this is how you turn a discussion into a grade. This is how you turn a discussion into a grade. Liking once you allow liking, you will see more options come up, like only graders can like and sort by likes, and those are kind of self-explanatory. A student can like it if you have let them like it, and sorting by likes will, will say that the more likes a post gets, the top of the page uh, is where it will live. Now, if you have decided to make your discussion graded, a lot of other options are available to you, to like assignment group, points possible, display points as, synthesis, 
and due dates and availability. If you do not make it a graded discussion, you should still have the group discussion and peer reviews, just like we did in assignments. <coughs> the last thing we're going to talk about today is creating quizzes in Canvas. We are actually not going to fully explore uh, creating quizzes in Canvas today, as that is the, another long pre presentation. That is another long presentation. That is another long presentation that will require uh, some time. So that will be our next step. So when you're creating a discussion, once again, you're going to go to that left side, that menu, find quizzes. And then after you go to that quiz page, you will click on the plus quiz button in the top right. If this is your first time creating a quiz in Canvas, the first option will be to choose a quiz engine. And I strongly suggest you stop or do not use the classic quizzes as it is going away. Um, you can read uh, uh, what they offer but do know that they are sunsetting classic quizzes right now. And hopefully from their timeline, it is by the end of this year or maybe the beginning of next year that they will no longer allow you to create classic quizzes anymore. Your old ones will still work for a time, but you won't be able to create them anymore. So I would suggest that everybody start learning about and using new quizzes and like I said, new quizzes is going to be the subject of our next study of Canvas. So please uh, get ready for that and know that we're not going to go into much depth today. As you do the quiz options, you will notice a lot of the same things that we saw for a graded discussion and assignments. Uh, there will be points possible an assignment group to choose display grade as a submission type. Now this is an external tool and it can't be changed. It shows it to you, not sure why, but it can't be changed. The sync to sys option is there. Anonymous grading is a is a newer feature and what that is is it can be more worth can be worthwhile if there are more than one grader. Um definitely probably not happening here in high school. Uh but it can be something you can think about if you want to try. And then of course, at the end, you will see the assigned to due dates and availability like we've seen everywhere else. So thank you for paying attention to this. Please rewatch it as many times as you need. This has been the Canvas Basics and coming up next uh, will be new quizzes. Thanks again and have a great day.